don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Hey, 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 when did you get here? Are you early? Nope, you're right on time. Man, it's good to see you. I'm John Zadar, as you probably already know, and this is On Top and Hot, and today is Wednesday, March 15th, which means I go live tomorrow. I go live every Thursday on YouTube, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Right after the bell, I'm live. Not just me, me and my pretty co-host, Lily. We go live for about an hour. We're there to talk to our viewers. They tell us the tickers, the stocks they're interested in, and we go looking at the general information and charting it. Maybe you've got a stock too, stock you're thinking about getting into, one that looks like it's going to pop, or one you're holding. Bring it on in. We'll be glad to look at it. Four o'clock tomorrow. So on this show, we like to talk about hot OTC and penny stocks, meaning stocks that have potential to make us money, not stocks that have already run and shown their colors. Now, a penny stock is not the same thing as an OTC stock. There's lots of penny stocks on the OTC market, but there's penny stocks on every market because a penny stock is nothing more than a stock that's under $5. Ton of them on the OC, lots of them on the major exchanges. And I would chase them wherever they are. And when I start my research and due diligence on any of them, this is where I go, the otcmarkets.com website. And I am saying I do my research on major exchange stocks here. Now, I'm not saying it's perfect, but they bring in a lot of information. And since the site is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC, with all that information we're always looking for, share structure, financials, filings, why not start here? Sure the heck beats going to Google and looking at a pile of information, trying to find those key pieces that are current, right? So let's take a look at our OTC market today. I have already refreshed that, and that is what we are looking at today, which is a significant improvement over what we've been looking at. We're back up to our old averages. I'm not saying it's strong, but it is definitely stronger. We were down to like $1.2 billion uh, dollar volume the other day, and that is super low. We need to be at $2 billion, and we're much closer to that than $1 billion at $1.8 billion. Share volume has considerably jumped. We were under 4 billion, I think 3.6 maybe the, the other day. We're at 6.3 billion. Now we need to be at 10. I say this all the time, but it's the best way to put it. Second gear is 10 billion. You can see it. You can literally see the market pick up and start moving faster. So we need to get this up to 10 billion. Our trades, we're back into the old zone. We were in for a long time complaining about. Now I'm happy to be back. We are stuck between 250 and 300,000 trades most of the time. But for the last 40 days, we've been under 250,000. We've been closer to 200,000. So everything is up today. It was a better day. Could you tell? Hmm. All right, I've got some interesting stocks to share with you today. They all have nice charts. I found all of these by looking at the charts first. If they had a hot chart, a nice warm chart, then I went and looked for news. Something current, something old. Maybe something that they announced a while ago and is going to happen in the future. These are the sort of stocks we're looking at, and I got three of them for us. Come on, let me show you what I got. First stock we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ, which caught me off my game. <laughs> this is SGBX, Safe and Green Holdings. I found this stock, as I said, by looking at the charts, and it looked great. She's been falling for a while. She's crossed a major SMA, some big green bars coming up underneath the 200. Wow, does it look hot. So I came over here, crossing my fingers, I found some lingering news. I did. I literally found some great news that came out not too long ago talking about something that's going to happen here in the near future. So it looked great. Did all my due diligence and I'm set up. Now I take a look at the chart and it's like, what happened? That was about it. What I saw was the climbing. She has come back down. But the fact of the matter is the lingering news, the catalyst, it's still legitimate. It's still valid. And there's an extra bonus on top of it. So a better price is not a bad thing. We just need to find the bottom. So SGBX, she finished the day at 87 cents and fell almost 1%. So what is this company all about? 
we're jumping into one of their news presses to get my description. They tell us that Safe and Green Holdings is a leading modular solutions company which operates under core capabilities, which include the development, design, and fabrication of modular structures, meeting the demand for safe and green solutions across various industries. Safe and Green Development is a leading real estate development company formed in 2021. The company focuses on the development of sites using purpose-built, prefabricated modules built from both wood and steel, sourced from one of Safe Green Holdings factories operated by their subsidiary, SG Echo. So that is what they are all about. Let's jump on into that relative volume, see how she did today not too good. She plummeted about 50% of her volume disappeared going from 42,000 shares a day down to just under 20,000 shares today. Yes, yeah, she's under the radar, but I got to believe this isn't going to stay that way. You're going to understand what I mean when you see the news I share with you here in just a minute. Taking a look at that share structure. Well, it's going to be a low float. Outstanding shares is only 12 million. They don't give it to us here, and you're not going to find it in a major exchange financial. So, back up, Google. And I can't guarantee this is the float, but this is all we really got. So, I just put in the ticker, the name of the company, and the word float and outstanding, and see what appears. We've got a 9.91, another 9.91, any more here? 11.6, 9.7. Looks like we got three nines and one 11. So roughly 10 million, <laughs> does that sound like a fair average? So we have a low float, no matter how you slice it, this is a low float. Looking at the financials for SGBX. Woo, 2021 was a bang up year, wasn't it? Compared to the other years, wow. Jumping from 8.7 million the year before to 38 million. Problem is, it costs them a lot to make this money. They got to give a lot of it away. This is all they end up with. So out of that $38 million, they got to keep $2.3 million. Taking a look at 2022. All right, we've got three quarters here. This one should be coming out any time now. What we've got on the board right now is 15, 19, maybe 20. 20 million out of three quarters, and they did 38 million in four. Well, unless this last quarter is something very impressive, I think they're going to fall behind on the revenues. But the revenues really don't have any play in why the chart's going to move. The catalyst has nothing to do with the financials, and I don't think anybody's going to be looking at the financials. Let's take a look at those disclosures. Now, they've got a lot of recent disclosures here, and I've already went through them. And I don't want to say that they don't matter, but there's nothing of consequence that's going to make the chart move. Uh, most of these are about news presses. You've got a couple here about management change up, stuff like that. The one good piece of uh, filing you've got here is the 13G. Ooh, we like these. These are beneficial ownership. This means you've got a new partner in the company. Somebody spent enough money buying enough shares that they actually qualify for a percentage of the company. And you can have one, two, ten. I mean, each one of these can have a lot of them. So you've actually got to open them up to see how many there are. But there's going to be at least one. And this is E. Brian Bagley. His name is right here. They tell us that he has 355,000 shares he's bought. And he just got himself 4.79% of the company. And that's all you need, need to see right there. And as I said, when you jump into these, there could be many people. So we've got a new owner who just got himself 7.5% of the company early in February. Let's take a look at that news now. So this news goes back to the beginning of the year. And again, I don't want to say it's inconsequential, but they've got some news back here. But three pieces I think we need to consider. Two, to show you what they're doing, what they're up to. And the very last one is where we get our update. This is a shareholder's letter that came out mid-February. And these two came out at the beginning of February. So this first one right here about the Moncello property. The company announced today that they have obtained a certificate of October occupancy for its Moncello project located in the Catskills regions. Now, I don't know, but I'm presuming they mean the Catskill Mountains. Given that the property has now been deemed habitable and meets all code and usage requirements, the leasing process has begun. 
The certificate of occupancy was obtained February 9th and it covers approximately 180 townhomes. The next piece of news, Safe and Green Holdings Corps announces agreement to provide four medical modules to the People's Health Care. The company has entered into an agreement with the People's Healthcare, a nonprofit organization based in Glendale, California, working in conjunction with the Teamsters Local 848 to deliver on or before the end of the second quarter of 2023. So just three months from now, they'll have it built. They are going to have four full mobile medical modules consisting of one testing module, one lab facility, and two primary care modules. And then that last piece of news, which gives us our catalyst. This is a shareholders update. Down here, they tell you about more deals that they're working on, properties, Largo Vista, some information. They're going to close it second quarter of 2023. Waldron, some information here about it. They're going to close it second quarter of 2023. They got a lot of things they're doing right now. And then here at Cumberland and St. Mary's, uh, they have approximately 3,500 units they are working on or that are already completed and they are pushing towards 10,000. So they're a very busy corporation. But up here at the very top is our catalyst. We continue to work diligently toward the 30% spin out of SG Devco from the parent company, Safe Green Holdings. And this is everything they've done and everything you've got to do for a spin out for a new company to go on to the major markets. This one is going on the NASDAQ. It is going to be worth $74 million. They filed the uh, Form 10. You've got to do that. They've done it. They've got their board of directors. They're forming a management team. They've announced the CEO and they anticipate a successful spin out the second quarter of 2023. You're looking at roughly three months. I'm not saying the end of it any time in that three month period. So what's the big deal? Come on, you know what I'm talking about, a spin out, free dividend shares. This is what we're talking about. So if you can buy the stock real cheap, you get a lot more shares, you get a lot more dividend shares for free. But then you don't have to buy it just for the dividend. You can buy it for the run up right it is falling right now it was climbing this morning but it's fallen at the end of the day well i expect when people figure this out when they come out with the news press just about the spin out when they say this is the cutoff date we're doing it you've got to have all your shares bought by this date the cutoff date the record date we will be dispersing the dividend around this date when that news press comes out come on this is going to do like all of them do. Dividend stocks run once word is out. And this is out, but nobody's paid attention to it because it isn't in the headlines. So people aren't jumping in and reading these like I do. That's the catalyst, and I think that's what's going to have it running. Now, I got to go show you a chart I'm not too proud of. But remember, I looked at this in the morning, and it did look good AM. Man, I'm almost embarrassed to share this chart with you. This is SGBX, and we're doing our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You like it? You need a backup? Go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account, and they'll give this to you for free. So we're looking at a six-month, four-hour view. Back in September is when we hit our high of $2.42. She then barreled down to the end of December where she hit a buck, decided to change her trend, jumped all the way up here to $1.80, stayed up above that 200 for a while until she crashed hard to her 52-week low here. Now, she was beating the heck out of this 50-day SMA. Look at those bounces. But you also see the letter M. Yeah, that's right, the letter M. Now, most people will talk to you about a W. If you see a big old W created on the screen, normally at the end of the W's creation, she will rock it. You'll get a nice surge out of it. Well, the M kind of works the same way, but it's not as friendly. When you see a big M on your board, it stands for murder. And when the M is completed, you normally see the price get hammered. And boy, did she ever. Fell all the way down to the 52-week low here. She did have a bounce early in the morning, which is when I saw it. And then she has come back down. We can see our volume has been decreasing here. And all of our oscillators are weak. They are all slowly and gradually falling. And our RSI... <laughs> She's dragging her face across the basement floor right now. 
Looking at that 20 day, one hour view, not expecting a whole lot better, except I can show you what I saw this morning. She broke through the 50 back here once and she broke through it again here. I was looking for a breakthrough. She hit a low bubble here, bounced up on top of her nine. She had broke her 20 and was right up underneath that 50. I was pretty confident she was going to do it in the morning. She had some good volume coming in. And then I left her and I didn't get back the check, which I intended to do, but didn't. And she didn't get over it either. She came back down under her 20, down under her nine, and she is falling right now. All of our technicals are weak, though the MACD's gotten a little stronger. We got a crossover and it's on the top. And our RSI isn't dragging her face on the floor anymore. Now she's just crawling. Looking at our five day, five minute view. So we were at a dollar here five days ago. We are at 86 cents here. She got through the 50 day here and she got through it here. Now look at our 200. You see how steep it is? Now kind of picture that there's ice on it. If the price being a person was to jump on top of that, chances are they'd slide down until they fell. This is just too steep to really make a breakthrough it for now. But the 50 day SMA, that is flat enough, right? It's come down, it's planed out, and this is when the price decides to jump on it. One bounce, hard fall. Another bigger bounce, a fall. I think she's trying to get her footing on the 50 day, and then she's gonna make an attempt for this 200. But she hasn't got that big catalyst, she hasn't got the volume, and we know it's gonna come in when they come out with that news press that says, we've got all the dates now. This is the record date that you have to buy your shares if you want the dividend. Everybody loves free shares. And once that news press comes out, this thing is gonna jump. And when it jumps, we're gonna be in at a pretty decent price. Right now we're at 87 cents and she is still falling. You may wanna get a starter pack right now. Now I don't know if you're interested in the dividends, Hang on to it, get it cheap. Every share you have is gonna qualify for dividends. But you could get in now while it's cheap before everybody finds out about the dividend and just catch that run. Be sure to sell some of it as it's rising. You never know when it's gonna fall. And if you sell on the way up, little bits, you know, 20%, 30%, something like that, you're putting money in your pocket and won't be caught off guard. Minimizing the risk. Have fun trading. So, SGBX. I think we could get something off of her. I got another major exchange stock for you here. It too comes from the NASDAQ. This is sticker VLCN, Vulcan Inc. Now I found this stock by identifying a warm chart. Then I came over here looking for some news for a catalyst and I found that too. She had news come out yesterday and it is pretty big news. So VLCN, she finished today at $1.51 with no gains, no losses, even keel, even money. Now we don't have a description here. They've got a real nice write up in a news press, but I think in this case, pictures are better than words. This is their website. What this company does is they uh, manufacture off-road, all electric recreational vehicles. Most of them are all motorcycles, but they do have the stag. This is their four wheel uh, buggy, I guess you'd call it. it. Has 125 horsepower. It will go up to 80 miles per hour. Careful on a trail doing 80 miles an hour. Um, it has a hundred mile capacity on a full charge. Now you're thinking a hundred miles, that's not very far. Well, folks, we're not on the highway going from city to city or state to state. We're in some bulk of some woods or on some dunes on a beach or something. A hundred miles and all of that, that's a lot of trailing. So she's a pretty thing and she's going for, I think they got the price up here. Uh, right there you go. She is going for $40,000. But this is not the only thing they got. They got the grunt, the runt, the stag, the brat, and the youth. The grunt it is a motorcycle with big, huge balloon tires. It is going for $6,000. The runt is just like the grunt, but it's a half pint. It's a little one for little people. The other bikes they have are the Brat, which is a little motorcycle for the roads. That, that is legal. It's just a little thing. It's got a, not much going for it at all. And then the other one is called the Youth. It too is a little bike for the little people. It's a motocross bike. 
So all of these are made in America and all of them are electric and they look like they've got first mover advantage. So what is the relative volume around the company today? Really? Under the radar, 85,000 shares is all she's doing. Although in this market, <laughs> nobody's really doing a ton of shares anymore. And she dropped to 62,000 shares. Share structure for Vulcan. We've got an outstanding share count of 24 million. Again, being a NASDAQ stock, we don't get a whole lot of information here and I'm not gonna get it from the financials. So I'm gonna have to go beg at Google's doorstep. What do they tell us? Well, we got a 17 million, a 10 million, another 17, 17, 17, 14,000, we wish. <laughs> so it looks like probably 17 is going to be the number. So. 17 between 10 and 17 but 17 came up the most often so that's probably our float financials for vlcn at the end of 2022 she had 4.5 million dollars and was running at a serious loss of 8.8 .8 million let's see what else we got here can we have anything else well that's the same year right because this was at the end of 2022 so we're just looking at the quarters here one two ooh, bad third quarter bad fourth quarter so things are looking sad right now financially they need something to change for them and I think what the news is gonna tell us that's the change they need disclosures for the company ooh we got some fresh filings here I mean fresh this S3 was not here earlier. I am unaware of this. This just came out today and it's not really good news. This is when they put more shares on the market. A public offering, if you will. Yep, came out today, March 15th, and they say they're gonna put $200 million worth of shares on the market. What's the current price? $1.51. Now, I don't know if these are all common stock or if there's going to be a combination of some preferred stock in there it is going to make a difference and we can figure it out just by reading this but whoa this is a big one <laughs> this goes 30 pages down so the information is here if you really want to dive into it but the bottom line is if they go putting more shares on the market in most cases the price drops because shareholders are frustrated their shares are being diluted they're losing value but I have seen in many cases public offerings cause the price to rise too. So it truly is a wild card. I don't know what to think about this. I hadn't planned on it. The rest of the filings here shouldn't bother the chart at all. They are all current. We've got our financial filings that just came out. You've got an 8K here. That's material change. This one was just announced in a news press. And then you got a bunch of Form 4s in February. These can be good or bad. These are filings that have to be put in whenever an insider buys or sells shares of the stock. And in this case, we got a couple selling and a couple buying, but nothing huge, nothing to worry about. So as I said, most of this isn't going to bother the chart, but this one, that S3, that is a wild card. We're going to have to watch this chart tomorrow to see what goes on. So let's jump on into that news. This news goes back to the beginning of the year, and they tell us here on the 17th of January, they already have pre-production orders of $116 million. People are putting in orders like they were for the Tesla. They're not even made yet, but I want one. They got $116 million worth of pre-orders. Then at the end of February, they had a collaboration with BF Goodrich Tires in an off-road racing program. And then we've got our catalyst which came out yesterday. This is the news. Vulcan Inc., the first all-electric off-road power sports company and Electromechanica vehicles, also known as Solo. This is an electric vehicle company that makes a three-wheel vehicle, two in the front, one in the back. They're out of California. Uh, they have agreed to allow Vulcan to use their Mesa, Arizona facility for final assembly of the Vulcan's Grunt EVO and the Runt fat tired electric motorcycles. So two of their popular bikes are going to be assembled right there. This is going to help them get the bikes out faster so they can get to keep that money we were just talking about that $116 million. Our move is a significant milestone for us as we strive to bring manufacturing back to the United States.
speed up the launch of our vehicles, and attempt to establish first mover advantage in the electrification of the off-road power sports industry. Off-roading, it is a big deal. And electric off-roading, that's fresh. That's new. And it, they make it sound like whatever they're manufacturing right now is being made somewhere else and having to be shipped here. So now they're going to be making them here. That is big news. But so is that S3. In either case, the chart is the chart we got to work with. So let's go take a look at it. Looks like a roller coaster to me. This is ticker VLCN, six month, four hour view. And I can see we've been here before by my blue timeline. We were here on July 8th when she had a nice run. I put in a support at the bottom of it and a resistance at the top and cut it right down the middle. And you can see she is all over that support right now. She did break it here. She's come underneath it. And the only thing that stopped her fall was the 200 day SMA. And I mean like a brick wall, bam. She bounced off of that. They call that the dead cat bounce. I expect she's probably gonna come back down here and hit it again. And I was thinking that this bounce was gonna give her what she needed to get up and going. But with this S3 out there now, I'm not quite sure what's going to go on. She has got little volume right now, and she's got little strength. All of her oscillators are falling right now. There was a lot of activity after market that's pulling it down. Did something happen today while I was making these videos that I'm unaware of? Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, this is that very bottom support. She is clinging to it, right? She's bounced off it here. She came way underneath it, and now she's hitting her head right up underneath it. So she is stuck to this zone right here. Here's our 200-day SMA above it. So she's got to get above this just to get on top of that 200-day. And everything, all the oscillators are looking really sad and bad right now. But look at all of this pullback after market. She has come from about a buck 56 down to a dollar 47. Let's look at our five-day, five-minute. Oh. So she was up here at $1.70 underneath the 50-day SMA. Looked like she was trying to get out without any luck. Fell down here to $1.40. Has now crossed the 50-day SMA. Hit her head continually on this 200-day SMA. Really struggling. Looks like that support line pushed her down. She could have probably got on top of the 200, but this was here, and now she's way down here. And our technicals look really sad. Yeah. I wish I'd been aware of this S3 before, and I'll bet you, I'll bet you that's why it has fallen right now, because that S3 just came out, and sentiment is telling me in advance, they are not happy about this shareholder dilution. No, they're not liking it at all. So this may not be one to watch tomorrow, but I mean, things can happen. I mean, you know, things can change in a heartbeat before you know it. She's running, and we've got no rhyme or reason for why it happened. So that's what's going on with this stock. She has made a good deal. She is going to have first mover advantage. It is a big market. I think it's a good company, but this is bad timing. That stinking S3. Well, coincidentally, it looks like all three stocks we're looking at are penny stocks on the NASDAQ. This last one is Safeguard Scientific's ticker SFE. Now, I found this stock the same way I found all of them, by looking at the charts first. But she doesn't have a warm chart. Not in that regard. She's not set up for a breakout or anything like that. What she has is strong and most likely recovery. She had a serious drop through this banking crisis, and it was unwarranted. And they're explaining that now. So it looks like it should just come right back. No harm, no foul. We dropped, we'll bring it back to where it was. Looks like it could be an easy gain for us. So SFE, she finished today at $1.95 and is already climbing. She was up 10% today. Now, they tell us in their fancy words over here that they're a holdings company. Historically, Safeguard Scientific has provided capital and relevant expertise to fuel the growth of technology-driven businesses. Safeguard has a distinguished track record of fostering innovation and building market leaders that spans more than six decades. And they are now changing up how they do things. But that's what they do. They don't have a real business of their own. They're helping other businesses to grow. So what was the relative volume around SFE today? Oh, 
jumped. She went from way under the radar at 17,000 shares to just kind of under the radar at 81,000 shares. That is a big jump, like five, six times as much. Share structure for SFE. Well, it's going to be another low float, whatever we come up with. 16 million is the outstanding. They don't tell us anything here. It's not going to be in their financials, yada, 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 you know. So looking over here at Google, we've got a couple numbers, 14 million, 11 million, 14 million, 11 million. We need a tiebreaker. And of course, we don't get one. What's this? 15 million. Great. So basically, I guess we could say between 11 and 15 million or just under 16 million. So we've got a decent float no matter what it is. Looking at their financials, this will be quick. We've got nothing annually. We've got nothing quarterly. What I found was a news press about their most recent financials. Now this is unique. The company doesn't make revenues. They're a holdings company. Everybody else is making money and they make money off of that. That's called assets. And they've got a lot of information here about how they break down the assets that they're making, which I'm not gonna go into. But there's some information we can use down here that clarifies why I think this is gonna run, okay? And it also explains what their reasons are. These are the companies they are invested in right here. And this shows you how much these companies are making. This healthcare here is making between five and 10 million. These companies here between 10 and 20. These companies between 20 and 30. And then they break down when they got them, how much ownership, blah, blah, blah. But here's their companies, right? Well, when you look over at the news, they tell us here that because of the Silicon Bank problem, they had problems, but this company themselves, Safeguard, does not have a banking relationship with Silicon Valley Bank. However, seven of Safeguard's ownership interests have banking relationships with Silicon Valley Bank. Those relationships include depository accounts, outstanding loans, and undrawn lines of credit. In addition, one of Safeguard's other ownership interests, of which Safeguard has an ownership interest of approximately 2%, also has significant depository amounts at Silicon Valley Bank. But, now this was written back on the 13th and we know what happened. The FDIC came in, pulled a Hail Mary, saved everybody, all the investors are covered for everything. So he goes on to say, we believe that these seven companies will have access to their funds in a manner that will not interfere with their ordinary course of operations. No harm, no foul. Nobody's been hurt here and we know things, that problem is resolved. This is not an issue. So this should come back up. I really don't have to point out where it fell, do I? No, this is SFE, Safeguard Scientific's six month, four hour view. And you can see where she has fallen. Now she started to drop right here. That financial we were reading, that's when it came out. They did lose some assets in this market. What they invested in have been falling, so their values have been falling. So people were already a little disgruntled here. But right here is the 10th. This is when the bank crisis occurred, and look how far they fell, from roughly $3 down to $1.60. And right now, she is rolling around. Look at all the volume here. She's coming back up. She is now at $1.95 and is just putting her snorkel up over the water so she can breathe. And I believe she's gonna push herself right back up here because she did not incur any harm, no losses. It's done with, it's taken care of. Can we get on with life? So I think this is gonna come right back up here. Our technicals, well, our PPO has fallen hard as everything did right here and it is now turning around and starting to point up and our ADX is going down and whenever you have your PPO, your percentage price oscillator and your ADX separating, the price is going up. Whenever they're coming together, like right here, the price is coming down. So we do have a spread starting there. We got a crossover in our MACD just about to occur and finally, oh my God, look at how deep in the basement we were, way under the concrete. We have just come up and are now on the floor at 37. 20 day, one hour view, huge drop. This is where we're looking, right? We were at $3.25. She started drooping a little bit from that 
uh, financial hit this low is now coming up she is on top of her nine day sma on top of her 20 right up underneath the 50 all of the technicals are in recovery mode there is no doubt about it and we got a beautiful bobby pin going on down here with our adx and our ppo looking at our five day five minute boy look at that stair step psh, psh, psh. stair stepped her way right down maybe she'll stair step her way right back up too look at that 50 day sma sharp angle right there not a nice gentle turn a very sharp angle that means a decision was made it is consolidated everybody's calming down getting ready now the 200 day sma has just come on the board i like to believe that the price gravitates to these new smas which means that's going to help pull the price up it is going plain like that it is just coming in for a landing which is going to give this an opportunity to jump on top of it without slipping and falling and look at all of our oscillators all of them are on fire on this short time span we are right up there right at 69 something on the rsi macd is pushing away from the signal line everything all of them are going up if every oscillator is going up you cannot lose i am very confident nothing is guaranteed but i am very confident that this is going to roll right back up to this line right here and you can make yourself a pretty smooth 33 percent what do you think so what did we have today we've got a spin out coming from sgbx everybody loves a spin out free shares once that news press comes out this stock is going to move then you've got sfe sfe overreaction to the bank crisis no harm no foul i've said it many times but it's the truth and that's why it's going to come back nobody was hurt there was no value lost so that should come back easy 33 percent gain there and then the last one vlcn well <laughs> they had great news you got two american companies that are working together solo and them to create these off-road electric vehicles here in the states they've got 160 million dollars worth of orders just waiting to be filled once they start making them and delivering they start getting that money but that stinking s3 came out at the end of the day and if the charts are any token sign of what tomorrow is going to be it's going to be bad we've seen a nice healthy drop after market already so do a little more DD. If not tonight, definitely before the bell. See what's up with these stocks. Check out the charts. Check out their news. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.